Thank you, Jesus. Father Almighty God, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Righteous Father, we reverence your holy name for there is none like you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, awesome God. Father, we give you the glory. We reverence your holy name for there is none like you. Almighty God, my creator, my father, we thank you. King of glory, righteous father, we thank you. I am that I am, my creator, we thank you. Unchangeable changer, the giver of life, awesome God, we thank you. Jesus Christ, my Lord and personal Savior, we thank you. Righteous Father, I give you all the glory for the privilege you have given us to be part of your ministry, altar of prayer fellowship. Righteous Father, we thank you. Almighty God, we thank you for the privilege you have given us to be alive, to be called and chosen by you to minister your word as a vessel to reach out to souls across the nations of the earth so that souls can be saved. Father, we thank you for finding us worthy to be called your children. Almighty God, we thank you. Righteous Father, we thank you for another time in your presence in altar of prayer fellowship. King of glory, we thank you, Almighty God, for divine visitation. Righteous Father, we thank you, Almighty God, for the impartation of your word into our lives. King of glory, we thank you, Almighty God, for you are awesome, God, you change it not. My creator, my father, we thank you because you are the king of glory, you change it not. Thank you, Almighty God, for what you are said to do again in this today's Bible study, in altar of prayer, fellowship, family, worship, art. My creator, my father, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have given thanks. My creator, my father, righteous father, I cry unto you. In any way, Lord, I am. I have sinned against you, daddy. I acknowledge in, that I am a sinner, that I was giving birth into, into the sinful world. Father, please have mercy upon me. According to your word, the Holy Bible. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it is written that if I confess my sins, God said he is faithful and just to forgive me and to wash me clean of every unrighteousness in my life. My creator, I come before your throne of grace at this hour of day. Our hour of the day. I beg for mercy, Lord. Daddy, have mercy and compassion upon me. In the name of Jesus Christ. My creator, my father, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, righteous father. Father, as many, oh God, that you have de designed this day to be their day of encounter with an experience with your word. Father, almighty God, have mercy upon them and give them a heart, a new heart to receive your word. Even as you're about to teach me your word again and use me as a vessel to minister your word, Father. I crown to you, Lord, King of glory. Have mercy upon your children, each and every one of us, as many that will come across this message or that will be contacting or will come in on air life. Father, I crown to you, have mercy upon us. Please forgive us our sins. Whatsoever the enemy, the devil, and his evil agent is using to lay accusation against us, Almighty God, please let your mercy discharge and acquit us of that evil accusation in the name of Jesus Christ, just like you. You remember and had mercy upon your servant Joshua, the high priest in Zechariah chapter 3, verse reading from verse 1 to verse 3. Righteous Father, I crown to you in any way there is an evil allegation, accusation by the devil and his evil agent against me, against my wife, my children, against anyone connected to this program. Daddy Almighty God, let your mercy discharge and acquit us of that evil accusation by the blood of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Almighty God, I commit myself unto you. I humble myself and I empty myself this day. Oh Lord, I am willing to be used by you, righteous Father. Please empower me, oh God, and put your word in my mouth. According to your word, oh God, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9, Lord, the word of God said, and the Lord put forth his hand into my mouth, said Prophet Jeremiah, and said, and he said, behold, I put my words in thy mouth. Father, just like you anointed the tongue of Prophet Jeremiah, that the Almighty God this day, I crown to you, have mercy upon me, and anoint my tongue with the power of your word today, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, anoint my tongue, oh Lord, with the power of your word today. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. My God and my Father, you said in your word that thou shalt also decree, things shall be established. Right, so that I decree, according to your word, every power, evil altar, evil power assigned to hinder this ministration today. That is, I bind and I cast that evil power out of our midst right now, by the power of God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the word of God said in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11, that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. Father, I decree, every power, every power assigned to hinder us from hearing your word to the Lord, we decree according to the word of the Lord in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11, be paralyzed and be neutralized right now. By the power of God Almighty, by the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I crown to you. As many that are about to hear, oh Lord, you promise you're going to give us a heart, a heart to receive your word. Oh Lord, my creator, grant unto us, oh God, your, your power and your might, oh God. Grant us, oh God, a new heart, oh God, to receive your word so that your word become part of us. We begin to live a holy, righteous, and godly life all the days of our life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my creator, my father, we thank you. Daddy, right outside, I give you the glory. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you. Daddy, I give you the glory. There is none like you, Jesus. There is no one to be compared to you. Thank you, awesome God. What a mighty God we serve. What a glorious God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. I am that I am, the creator of the heaven and the earth, our Father. He faileth not and changeth not. He is the beginning and the end of our faith. The man of war, the mighty man in battle. People of God, if you are willing, if you are willing, if you are willing to hear the word of God today, God is willing to minister his word to your heart. If you are willing, to hear the word of God, the Holy Bible today, God is willing to minister his word into your heart. All you need to do is to open your heart to the word of God, is to open your heart to the word of God. In the next one hour, I want to believe that God is about to minister his word to my heart and onto your heart. If only we are willing to hear the word of God. If only we are willing to hear the word of God. Like I always say on this platform, don't judge me. Because what we are about to study is the word of God. Anyone that is not comfortable with it, go to God and ask God, why was your word written? By the respiration of the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So therefore, I want to encourage you to pick up your writing materials if you can. Your Bible, your jotting materials, so that you can know the Bible verse down and also study. Let the Bible be part of your life. Let the Holy Bible become your life manual. Let the Holy Bible become what? Your life manual. That is what we are here for. For us to study the Word of God and make the Word of God the Holy Bible. Our life manual. So that we will no more be under the manipulation of sin. So that we will no more be slave to sin. The Word of God said, e that you yield yourself to, that's what you are a slave to. So if you yield yourself to sin, you are a slave to sin. And mind you, the Word of God also tells us that whosoever committed a sin is of the devil. So there is no shortcut. I am not the one condemning you. No one is condemning you. It is only telling you the word of God is simply telling you today. If you are living in sin, you are of the devil. It's not condemnation. I'm only telling you what the position of the word of God is. So it is better you become aware today that when you live in sin, so many things that happen around you will continue to manipulate you. But when you begin to live a holy life, righteous and godly life, the power of the Holy Ghost the same power that raised Jesus Christ from death will begin to give life into your mortal body. He will begin to bring a new life into you. When you allow Jesus Christ to come and dwell in you, he will begin to dictate your style of life. He will begin to dictate your ways of life. He will begin to dictate the utterances you alter. There is so much to gain when you give your life to God in genuine holiness. I repeat, genuine holiness. There are so many brothers and sisters across the nations of the earth who said they have even given their life to God, but their ways are not close to being holy. Then we, what do we do then? We begin to re-examine ourselves. When Paul preached to the people, the people asked him, what shall we do? He said, what you need to do is to repent and be baptized. They repent. Repent of your evil ways. People of God, it is better you make it to heaven than to own everything on this earth and end up in hell. Hell is not a place created for man. 
He was created for demons. Created for wickedness. He was created to punish sin. But now you choose to took the part of those whom they purposely want to live in sin. But I, I, I know the mercy of God is available. You can come out from that sin. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe the person is still going to come online. He has not even come online yet. Maybe we'll come across this message a year from today. Maybe we'll come across this message two weeks from today. Maybe we're going to come across this message later this evening. But I'm very sure there is somebody out there that this message is made for. Who must change today? That's why in other prayer fellowship, it's not about one million crowd. We are looking for one soul. Maybe one soul in the community where I am. Another one soul in another state. In another part of the state where I am. Maybe another one soul in this state, in the nation where I am. Maybe another one soul in the country where you are. In the community where you are. One soul. By the time you talk about souls in communities, in cities where you are, you'll be closing to one million souls. So it is one soul. That that message is meant for. I believe that that message is meant. This today's message is meant for me. And what is the topic of today? The storm of life. The storm of life. A lot of people go about murmuring. Oh, I wish that this storm will overpass. I wish that this storm can come to an end. What do I mean by storm? I'm talking about trials. As long as you are born onto this earth, the trials. That might come to you might vary from the one that comes to Mr. B. That is the next person. But there are about to be trials on this earth. And when trials come, it makes you stronger and they don't last forever. So when trials begin to last forever in your life, when they begin to persist, then there is something you are doing that is not right. And you need to search the word of God. And that is the reason why we're here today today. For us to all search the word of God. What is the word of God, the Holy Bible? Saying concerning the trials of life. We are looking at the word of God today, the trials of life. I repeat, the trials of life. Follow me to the book of Matthew chapter 8. Follow me to the Holy Bible, the book of Matthew chapter 8. We are critically going to look at the word, the topic today, the trials of life. The trials of life. I tell you, most of the things that have come to us in life and they continue to be there, they refuse to go because you permitted it. You say, Are you sure? I say, Yes, you permitted it. If you can find the right word the Holy, in the Holy Bible, if you can find the right word that speaks against that situation in this Holy Book, I can tell you categorically the word of God said. Though trials might come in the night, but joy comes in the morning. You will come out of that trials more glorious, gl gloriously. But what do you need to do? You need to find a word in the Bible that will change your story. And how do you go about it? In getting that word is what we are going to look at today. We are looking at the trials of life. The storm of life. Storm are always there. Your storm might vary from the next person's storm. The trials around you might vary. To you, it's something you can handle. There are some people, they can't handle it. There are some people whose trials are so horrible. And they pray, ah, which God, I can just come out of this. Matthew chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 24. You will assume that it will be assumed ordinarily to a layman. Or to those who don't understand the word of God, that when Jesus Christ was with the disciples, no trials will come to them. Because he is the one that created the heaven, that was the power that created the heaven and the earth. He was right with them. So when we believe, ordinary, or when we assume that because the owner of the soul of man, the, the one who came to die for our sins, was right with them, when we believe, ordinarily, that storm will not come. But that is not true. According to the word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 8, verse 24. If you also look at the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 23 to verse 25. Matthew chapter 8, verse 24 to verse 27. Luke chapter 8, verse 23. Luke chapter 8, verse 23 to verse 25. You find out that storm came even when Jesus Christ was with the disciples. But they did one thing that was unique. That's what we need to learn today. They did something so that the storm will go away. According to the word of the Lord, in Matthew chapter 8, 
verse 24. I read in Jesus' name. I'm reading King James Version. God bless you. I don't know who is going to come across this message. Maybe you that is here right now. The word of God speaking to us in Matthew chapter 8, verse 24. And behold, there arose a great tempest as a storm. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. In so much that the ship was covered with the wave, but he was sleeping. People of God. Jesus was right in the vessel, in that ship. When the storm came, there was a great storm in the sea. Even the water was flowing into the ship. And Jesus was right there sleeping. He was sleeping. Not because he did not know storm would come. I can tell you he knew storm would come. Because at the end of the day, he asked them, where is your faith? God is looking at you and I. Where lies your faith? When storm comes, storm will come. When those storm come, storm I'm referring to trials. When they were sailing in the sea, there was trial. And one of those trials that came in was the storm in the sea. Verse 25. And his disciples came to him. He came, they went to Jesus, who was sleeping at that time, in the same ship where storm was almost overpowering. Verse 25, Matthew chapter 8, verse 25. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We perish. Why did they not try to rescue the sheep, sheep by themselves? That's the question you show you and I, which we be asking ourselves right now. There was storm in the sheep, but where did they go? They did not try to rescue the sheep with their own effort. They went to the one who created the heaven and earth by his power. The one whose power that created the heaven and earth could dwell in was right there, but he was sleeping. So also in our lives, Jesus is right there, but we allow him and we decide to do use our effort when storm comes. We decide to consult evil doctors. We decide to conduct politicians. Or sometimes we decide to conduct native doctors. All those ones who have refined. You know this reform native doctors we have right now the reformed native doctors they have dropped their native doctor's shrine they are now in in different uniform if they own churches how on earth do you say you own a church and you bury human being what we see on facebook you bury a human being on the altar i say that is not a shrine that you they still call it a church people think they don't forgive him he just forgive what who is even holding something against him the man has soiled his arm. He belonged to the devil. He has a lifetime coming out with him. You know why? When he went to the devil, he gave his soul. He surrendered his soul to the devil. So when you see them, the word of God said, by their fruit, you shall know them. What fruit do they bear? Bearing human beings under their altar. And they said they are reading the Bible to you. Which Bible? The Holy Bible. We need to come out from this, our spiritual sleep and slumber. And be awake because the end is near. If you are caught, not ready, when the master will come, I'll be assuring you, he will come and take his own. And you may be left behind. I don't know who I'm talking to. You better be ready. Because storm is part of life. That storm. Might be the storm that is programmed to drag your soul to hell. How? They know that when that storm comes, you will go and put forth your hand into iniquity. No wonder the word of God speaking to us is Psalm 125. Psalm chapter 125. If there was no storm, why would the word of God say it? Psalm chapter 125, verse 3 says, The rod of the wicked, I repeat, the rod of the wicked shall not, will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. The rod of the wicked will not rest upon the righteous. If, say, eh, less, if he rests, the righteous will go and put forth their hand into iniquity. So when storm comes, they know the reason why they program that storm for you. 
One, to make you lose faith in God, the first thing, the key of it. Two, to keep you busy perpetually seeking for personal solution, every solution. Whereas the one, just like the disciples discovered, they knew immediately that if they do not call on the Savior of the world, they knew that the storm would over overpower them. They knew that this storm was in normal. How come in this lake, at this hour, this storm just appeared from nowhere? The disciples knew. What did they do? They did not use their effort. They went to the one who was sent to this world to save you and I. And asked him, Lord, mercy, awake and save us, for we are perishing. They cried out. Have you cried out to the Lord when you face that storm? Storm will come anytime. But the one that has solution to the storm is the one you are ignoring. The one that has solution to the storm is the one you refuse to acknowledge as your Lord and personal Savior. But rather, these days, it is your bishop, it is your apostle, it is your general overseer, it is your pastor that you have made the Lord and personal Savior of our life. May God forbid. I say may God forbid on your behalf. That you turn a man born of a woman who was conceived by a relationship between man and a woman to this world as your Lord and personal Savior, what we have today. That's why you see a lot of people praying, the God of my pastor. We swear did they write it in your Bible. They say, God of your pastor. Where is it written? God said, if you pray to the God of your pastor, God Almighty. God that said, at the name of Jesus. That is the one that the disciples run, run to. They knew that they stormed up before them. If they keep quiet, it will consume them. The word of God said in verse 25 of Matthew chapter 8, saying, And they woke him up, Lord, have mercy, for we are perishing as a result of this storm. They knew. Why don't you open your eyes and wake up from this sleep, spiritual sleep of ignorance and on, on of ignorance and perpetual self-imprisonment. Why don't you wake up from this sleep? They program a storm for you. You accept it. The disciples did not accept the storm. No, they refused to accept it. They said, no, this storm is not just a storm. If it was just a storm, why did they not find a way to maneuver the, the boat out of the storm? Why? Why did they not rely on their own effort? If it was another storm. But when Brother Lord says, be careful, storm is coming. Be ready so that you not sweep you over. He said, no, he's doing that. Who no. I've never I don't speak my word, I'm speaking the word of God. When storm come, that's come in your life. Or when storm approach you, what you do, do exactly what the disciples did. Go and cry and knock on the door of the Savior of the world. Say, Lord, have mercy. Storm has come and is here to consume me. Have mercy. Blind Bartimaeus said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. He knew that if that occasion passed him over, he knew that if Jesus passed over without answering him that day, he might remain a beggar forever, not just only blind. He cried and they asked him to shut his mouth. He said, no, this is a lifetime opportunity. I will not let you pass by. The word of God said, and he cried aloud even when they tried to shut him up. He cried aloud. That drew the attention of Jesus. Somebody called for mercy. That day, the story of blind Bartimaeus changed. His identity that had to even do with his name. He was blown blind, so they gave him blind Bartimaeus. That day, his name changed because he's no more blind. God, God visited him. The glory of God was manifest every day. How much you and I? Who 
who Jesus Christ died for on the cross. So that we will become adopted children of God Almighty. Now we have the express right as new children, as in born again in the eyes of God. As children of God who live a holy life. Now you have an express right to assess God's throne. Go and read Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 16, verse 14 to verse 16. Is it because we have Jesus Christ, who also feel what we think? Let us then come before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. He did it for us on the cross so that we can approach God's throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace when we need that grace. But what do we have? When storm comes, we decide to run to man. We decide to commit all our resources to man. Go to a level that people pay for people to pray for them. There is nothing wrong with giving thanks and blessing the servant of God. But don't pay in advance. What are you paying for? What are you paying? You're paying for somebody. That person you pay for to pray for you is not a pastor. If you collect that money, it's not a pastor. It's not sent by God. You don't pay for the gift of God. It was given to him. If actually it's a gift of God that is existing in him. If it's not a gift of demon. It was given to him freely. Declared by the word of God. And freely is supposed to give it out. Freely is supposed to give it to impart it to your life. I'm not in the business of criticizing anybody. I'm here about your soul. When storm come. Run and save your soul. Don't trade your soul for the mundane things of this world. I'm going to talk about that topic in a later day. The soul of man. This flesh that you see, this flesh is not important. This flesh is useless. It's, it's going to perish. What is important in a human being is his soul. And that is what those powers of darkness are looking for. In our present day world, it has gone so bad that people now look for soul. So look for soul to capture for their evil ritual. It is, it is, oh God, the level of which people hunt for human soul now is so alarming. Is the soul. And now, when stone come, you take your own soul and go and trade it for modernities of this world. Now they don't even look for it. Too. You will go and give it to them. Just exchange your soul for the modernities of this world that you will die and live. Your precious soul. What they need demon is looking for in your life is your soul. If they can capture your soul, they are done with you. Is it that they capture it wholeheartedly or they'll be draining the glory out of it? They'll make you useless in life. You can never amount to anything. I know of two brothers. They are not related. I'm only mention two brothers. I know of two persons. Directly, I know them. One of them came to a brother and said, true life story, something I know very well, personal. I'm not saying hearsay. Personally, I knew about the story. One of them came to a brother and said, brother, everywhere he has gone to in life, every pastor he has spoken to, said they told him he cannot amount to anything again in life. What happened? That the mother of that boy has used his soul in exchange for an occultic ritual. The, bo the brother was telling that other brother that this is what his life has turned to. I always used to pray. I learned that the brother later took weapon I was trying to say, you want to kill the mother for what? What are you killing your mother for? The one that created you with that soul that they exchanged is still very much available. That is the one the disciples discover. He is the only one that have access to the heaven, the, the king of glory. The one who can bring, restore back your soul. That were stolen from him. He, they knew that if that opportunity passed them by, that boat will sink. And still, the one that created the heaven and earth will come out alive. Because it's, it's, not, it's more of a spirit than a human being. Because the power that created the heaven and earth was in him. So they cried unto him. Awake. Awake, Savior. Lord, have mercy. The storm has come. So, so there is a storm. If that storm come to you, what you need to do is to run to Jesus. 
And when you run to Jesus, you must first make yourself pure before him. You must be holy in his sight. For Jesus to fight for you. The word of God said to us, the effectual private prayer of a righteous man, not an ordinary man, a righteous man, availeth much. There is something that needs to change in you. You need to change the way you think. You need to change your mentality. You need to deliver yourself from this spiritual slavery. Please, I beg you, brothers. I beg you, sisters. I beg you, my friends, wherever you are on this planet, hearing this message, I appeal to you right now. Awake from your deep spiritual and physical sleep of ignorance and disoriented lifestyle. Awake, I beg you. Please, I am appealing to you. Today might just be the right day for you to make that step. Awake from that physical, spiritual, deep sleep of ignorant and disoriented lifestyle you are living. There is a way out of that situation. And that way is Jesus. Because ultimately, if you perish and die in that situation... And you have not repented because what you need to do is you need to repent. You should die without repentance, so repenting so that you come out from that situation. It's not my word. He that committed a sin is of the devil. Does devil has an internal place in heaven, the holiest of holy? Does Satan has a final place in heaven, the holiest of holy? No, he does not. So if you are the devil and you died in that situation. Let me tell you, the person who wastes your glory for his ritual, you don't know God can have mercy on person. He will make heaven. Why you that was very careless we end up in hell? I'm just telling you how wicked this word is. Don't blame God. God gave every man, you and I, free will. God gave each and every one of us free will. What did God say in the Garden of Eden? Adam, every tree, eat of every tree of this week, of this garden. Give you free will. You only to live just one. God gave each and every one of us free will. That is why when you are blaming God, just remember you're just blaming yourself. Before God gave you the free will, He gave you the right to choose. That's why I said, I call heaven and earth in Deuteronomy chapter 9, chapter 13, verse 19. He said, I God was the one speaking directly. I call on heaven and earth to bear witness against you if you make the wrong choice. To be a witness against you that I have put before you life and death, causes and blessings, and he not tell you what to do. Choose life. He said so that on that day you will say, Oh, I did not know. He will say, This is your word, the word of God concerning you. Who did you choose life? God gave each and every one of us free will, and he gave will give you an option. Take this step. What else are you looking for? For God to come from heaven to tell you that, okay, you have not making this. Like, hurry up. God will, stand. God will come again after giving you his word. What are you waiting for? Storm has come. Yes, it has come. Trials is right before you. Yes, it has come. What do you do? What did the disciples do? You want to know? Matthew chapter 8, verse 25. And the disciples, and his disciples came to him. I walk, I walk him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. There was storm. They did not keep quiet. They went to him. Then he was sleeping. Then they went to him. Lord, I work and save us, for we perish. The disciples said, I work, Lord, I work. So, so you are supposed to cry unto God. Lord God Almighty, awake, for this storm is about to consume me. This storm in my marriage is trying to destroy my marriage. This storm in my children's life is trying to consume my children. This storm in my life is trying to waste my life. Awake, oh Lord, and save me. But if the disciples were living a sinful life, he will not stand up and save them. Because they were choosing one. He chose them. He chose them. Even Judas Iscariot that was in the midst. Let me tell you what happened. Satan did not enter Judas Iscariot at the first time. Judas Iscariot only had the hidden sin 
That is, he had the habit of changing like a chameleon. From the beginning, the word of God said, he seen, this is the one. Among them is the one the devil will use. You say, why? The word of God speaking to us in June. Um, why the saints were going to God? Satan was in their midst. If you read from verse 8. Why the saint gathered to present themselves before the Lord God Almighty? Satan was there. So Satan is always in the midst of the saints. Why the disciples were dead? Eh? The one that the devil will use eh, was in their midst. So storm will come. What do you do in that situation? Is what determines how you come out from that storm. If you keep quiet, the storm will consume you, not your portion in Jesus' name. You need not to keep quiet. This storm and trials could be any form. The storm I'm referring to can be in different form. That storm and trial, it could come in different form. Something to just come and test your faith. What are you supposed to do? Exactly what the disciples did. You go back to the one who, you go. I don't say go back. My my Lord and personal service is right up there. You call upon the one that have the power to resurrect the dead. You call upon the one that have the power to create the one whose power created the heaven and the earth. Lord, here I am. The storm has come. Have mercy and save me. But as you are crying out to him, you must first repent of your sin because it's the effectual fervent prayer. Of a righteous man, they are villain much. You must be a righteous man. When I mean righteous man, both man and woman, you must come out from this your deep sleep of ignorance and disorientation. You refuse to understand or see what the word of God is saying concerning you, your marriage, your children, your life. You don't want to, you're just rigid. No, I can't move. Nobody will see. Let me what is the most annoying thing is this repentance? No, it's not a thing of. A suicide mission to repent. No, the pain that brought joy to your life is already upon Jesus. If you read that Isaiah chapter fifty-three, the pain that you have faced to be saved, Jesus took the pain. So salvation is free. Well, what do we have? We say no, 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 no. This holiness is like um, it's another form of kind of thing. I cannot. Let me ask you, what is there in holiness that makes it so bad and difficult that you cannot repent? What is there in holiness that is so difficult that you cannot find yourself changing? Why must a holiness lifestyle be difficult for you to adopt? Why? Sorry, I'm trying to share this message. Why must a holiness lifestyle be difficult for you to live. The first thing they say, some people, what will my friends say? Who are your friends? Who are your friends that you are afraid of? Who are they? No, my friends, my friends. Who are they? Are they Jesus Christ that died for you? No. And you are more afraid of what your friends will say than your soul. Your soul that is so precious to God to perish and end up in hell and end up in hell. You are more afraid of your friends and you are not afraid of your soul ending up in hell. This your same friends, if that storm can go beyond the control of man, they will desert you instantly. All these so-called friends that you just that will not allow you to repent when that storm that before man come around you, I can assure you, none of those friends will be there for you. If they ever want to come to your aid, hmm? Hmm? if they belong to, maybe some of them, that belong to Occultic Association, they will tell you they want to come to your aid to help you. They are not coming anywhere to help you. Because peace has eluded them. Because they have sold their soul to the devil. And they, will have, they have mortgaged their peace and sleep. They don't want you to enjoy that peace and that grace that is upon you. What they do, in the pretense they want to help you, they tell you they will have someone you want to come and join them. They will tell you, no, it's a league of friends. You will never suffer. You will have money. You are... They did not tell you that 
as you come to join them, you have mortgaged your soul for life. You can't have it back. Except Jesus Christ gave you a fresh one. Because I don't know how he's going to do it. He's the creator of the heaven and the earth. They did not tell you that from that moment, they said they want to look for a solution. The solution as a result of the storm that came to you, that they want to look, provide for you, they will not tell you that you will no more sleep, that you have mortgaged your sleep. People of God, I'm talking about an experience I know about somebody this time. This one, somebody who was sitting with me telling me this story. And you believe how somebody will call you, sit you down face to face on the same round table, one on one, and tell you, brother, Lawrence, you are speaking to me. Lawrence, you are choose to serve God through Satan, through Jesus. I repeat, he was speaking to me. Lawrence, you have choose to serve God, God through Jesus. I repeat, Lawrence, you have choose to serve God through Jesus. That was what the brother was telling me. And he said, him, oh, that brother that is talking to me, he have chosen to serve God through Satan. You see the error in life. I'm not telling you here, say, not a dream, true life story, what a brother was telling me. And you tell me, that brother, mean well for me. He acknowledged that you choose to serve God through Jesus. How will you now, Lawrence, abandon Jesus and join him? That was the thing that was in my mind. Brother, this is what you told me. Now, how are you going to introduce me to the same thing that you are into? I am already with Jesus. As you abandon Jesus, I come and join you on serving Satan. It's an error. We are already on two parallel express lines. We cannot meet. Light and darkness would meet. So why are you introducing to me? I'm not telling you he was pretending. This was what he was telling me to do. And I look at him, I didn't utter a word, I just kept him quiet. Why? Because I pity him so. Because he doesn't understand that that thing he did, he has mortgaged his soul forever. He did not understand. I'm not sure he understood the consequence at that time he just joined. Because after then, they begin to ask him for blood. They begin to ask him for blood. And I put him before him. Young man, this thing you are saying so. Would they not ask for human sacrifice? He said, no, 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 it's not required. Not too long. Not too long. I don't want to mention the one that they wasted. Somebody, they just wasted, he wasted it. I just laugh. Not too long. Maybe his wife got the wind of what is going on. The wife ran for her dear life. Ran a divorce. Because he would have wasted her too. I am not condemning that even that brother. I am simply saying, do not join them. Because the storm that have before you, or the storm that will come around you, there is the one that has solution. You need not to serve the devil, Satan, for storm to be removed out of your part of destiny. Jesus Christ has paid the price on the cross to remove storm from your life. He already did it with his price of blood. Died painfully for that purpose. How do I know? The word of God said, he that committed the sin is of the devil. First John chapter 3 verse 8. He that committed the sin is of the devil. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So he already is already manifested so that the work of the devil that is in your life will be destroyed. But what do you do? You reject his, 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 his appeal. Here I am knocking at the door of your heart. In Revelation chapter 3. Here I am. I'm knocking. Jesus will cry unto you. Crying aloud with a loud voice. Because the same voice is using to cry. Saying today come unto me. That same voice. On that day of judgment. He will use to tell you depart. I know that not. not the, I know the not. Because then. He's not going to come as a savior. He's coming as a judge. How terrible will that day be? He's going to come as a judge. And he said, I come quickly. My reward is in my hand. I will give to you according to your works. Now, you are judged according to your works. But you are not saved according to your works. You are saved by mercy. So no matter the works you have done, that is not right in the sight of God, mercy is available if only you can change. But when you say, as a result of that storm, you keep quiet, the storm might consume you. And the reason why that storm is there is because Jesus is not there. If Jesus is there, storm don't permanently stay there. As they are coming, they look like when they pass by. 
you just blow them away. The storm came around the disciples because they live in this world and the storm is in this world. And when the storm came, they went to the one who created the heaven and the earth. Lord, here we are, have mercy. Awake and save us for we perish. Verse 26, what did Jesus Christ do? Thank you, Jesus. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful? If you know who you have with you, you will not be afraid. Jesus Christ said, Why are you afraid? Why are you fearful? Oh, ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. The one that created that wind, that water, that one, the one whose power is beyond the waters, spoke to the storm, and the word of God said there was calm. So you think it's just a Bible statement? It's just a Bible statement. It's not something that is real. The disciples were human beings like you and I. Who had the privilege to be around the Savior of the world when he was here on earth? But while he was living, he said, as I live, I will not leave you comfortless. I am going to ask the Father to send you a comforter who will be with you. So he is still here present. By who? By the presence of the comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, dwelling in you. So you still have that access to God Almighty. But what do you do? You just throw his trash it to post highway. He knock at the door of your heart. You trash it. He's knocking at the door of your heart. You trash it. You feel that it's not relevant. Storm is coming. Whether the world like it or not, people of God, storm is coming. What did I say? Storm will come. It's not sweat. Read your Bible. You say, where did I find it in the Bible? Where that storm will come. I'm not even saying the one you experience now. The storm in marriage, storm in life, storm in activity. Storms will still come upon this earth. Follow me to the book of, um, thank you, Jesus. Revelation. Follow me to the book of Revelation chapter 3. The Bible expressly tells us, storm will come. So, is you, now, you know, as a child of God, yes, you are not supposed to be consumed by that storm. But when that storm will come to try this world, people of this world, it will come. The word of God can never lie. Maybe by the time we read it, you know whether it will, the word of God say whether it will or shall. Revelation chapter 3. Read it for yourself. Verse 10. I expect people to be weeping. Anyone that is not in the Lord, just be crying. Anybody that is not in the Lord is in for a big, long, a, a, a very difficult journey. Anyone that is not rooted in the Lord is in trouble. The word of God speaking to us in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, saying, I read in Jesus' name, King James Version, because thou has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth, to try them which shall come. Let me read it again. Maybe you didn't get it well. Let me read another version. Maybe if I read another version, you will come to understand. This is a serious issue. Storm will come. Where lies your hope when that storm comes? I'm asking, where lies your hope? Where lies your faith? Because we are looking at the storm of life as a topic today. Revelation chapter 3, I'm going to read NIV, verse 10. Almighty God will thank you. He said, no, Brother Lawrence, you talk too much. It's not me. I'm reading the Bible. Be ready because storm is going to come. The world, the storm you have seen. You see this storm that people have seen? This is man-made storm. There is another storm coming. If God does not, if the, sorry, if the mercy of God does not help mankind, when this coming storm comes, the one that the whole world is experiencing now will be a child's play. Revelation chapter 3, NIV, verse 10. 
since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. NIV. God said, because you have obeyed my instruction, you are living a life that is pleasing unto me. You have stopped fornicating. You have stopped adultery. You have stopped stealing. You have stopped worshipping idol. You have even stopped worshipping man. Those who worship the apostle, your problem. You have stopped worshipping man. You have stopped doing all those stupid things that the Bible says you should not do. Those things that they say, this is how I feel. That's why I'm feeling something that make me do it. You have, if you do not, if because you have if, neglect these things, that is, sorry, because you have refused to partake of these worldly things. Hear what the word of God said. Oh. In Revelation, those who will benefit from the mercy of God when storm come. So even if storm come to your marriage, God said I will keep you far away from that storm. He will deliver you from that storm. Even if storm come to your home, he will deliver your home. Even if storm come to the community where you are. When I mean storm, I'm talking about trials, different trials. Like you see the one we are the world is experiencing now. It's small. Those who are not in the Lord, they are in trouble. They are in big trouble. That's why you hear the number of people that have died. Alarming. Never in this generation. There have been storm trials. Never in this generation have the world experienced this kind, this kind, this kind. In millions. And if God Almighty, if His mercy doesn't prevail, the next storm that will come up, it, see, only God Almighty know the extent to which that storm will, will, will manifest itself. So He has already promised you and I that because since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial. That is going to come. Remember here yeah, that the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitant of the earth. The storm that trial that will surely come upon the whole world to test everyone that is of this world. You are not of this world if you are saved. You are not of this world if you are saved. You are not a candidate. Why did this world come today? There are many of us who are going through storm, saying, how, when do I come out of this storm? I have good news for you. If you give your life to God, depart from sin, forsake your evil ways, and seek the face of God continuously, that storm will overpass. What did I say? The word of God said to us, we will get it, 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. That storm will overpass. That storm will overpass. If you read the book of Isaiah chapter 57, sorry, Psalm chapter 57, verse 1, Psalmist cried unto God, Lord, have mercy, and hide us under your divine protection until these calamities overpass. If there was no calamity, why would Psalm David say that kind of statement? Now there is a possibility of you hiding under God Almighty by the mercy of God that that storm will not come near you. Even if you come, God will give you the grace to overcome it. You need to understand what God said concerning your life. A lot of us are suffering for no just cause. I always tell anybody who cares to listen. You choose to suffer. On this planet Earth, you choose to suffer if you're suffering. I'm telling you, you know why? The one that created this earth said to us, the ones that are in my palm, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one, it is even death or, or after death, no one can plunk them out of my palm. No one. If you were, there will be one where I say, not only one person, but maybe the Satan can do. He said, no one. Because the one who gave these ones to me, he's greater than all. He's God Almighty who created every other thing. People of God, brothers and sisters, I want you to come to the realization that God Almighty, 
did not permit that trials to come to your life for it to consume you. God will not permit trials to come to life so that it will consume you. It is to test your faith and to make you stronger. When trials come, it is to test your faith. That's why Jesus Christ asked them, where lies your faith? You are crying. Where lies your faith? Oh, year of little faith. Where lies your faith? When storm come, what you need is to activate that unusual faith in God more and more. And continue crying unto him in prayer. Lord, I will not let you go. <laughs> Jacob knew that that night was a night of decision for him. He <laughs> cried, Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. He knew if that day passed, he was in trouble. So when storm comes, first of all, even before storm comes, be ready. Any storm that wants to come to any community, people are always ready. They prepare. So when any storm, any trial want to come, even be ready. How do you get ready? Live a holy life. Live a holy life. Depart from sin. Depart from iniquity. So that the presence of God dwelling in you will give you the strength to overcome and come out of that trial. Follow me to the book of First Peter chapter 5, please. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, I'm reading King James Version. I'm reading from verse 6. The word of God said to us, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exhort you in due time. Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. The word of God said, cast all your, everything the worries, including that storm that you're seeing, cast it onto him. Because why? He cares for you. He loves you so much, that is why he first sent his beloved son, Jesus Christ, to die that you may not perish. John 3, 16, spell it out. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only because of that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have an everlasting life. That storm is not supposed to take you. God can never permit what to take your life. You permit those things. Because when God permits storm to come, he also gives you grace to overcome. When God permits storm to come around you, because God, God does not bring storm, he permits it. When God permits, what did God tell Satan? Satan asks God, why don't you permit me to just visit Job? God said, okay, but don't touch his soul. There God permitted Satan to go and do whatever he said I feel he want to do. But that is so, don't touch it. Do you people know? Did you not see when I was talking about so earlier? So is the most important thing in your existence. Your soul. If the devil captures your soul, you are in for a long, destructive journey. If the, let me tell you, I repeat it again. What the evil people are hunting for right now on earth is human soul. They are just hunting like hunters. Everybody is rushing. Just see any innocent person now. Ah, they see glory. Everybody is rushing. I must collect this glory. People will be rushing. If it's a lady, just, just pack it. They can pay any money. Mind you, that money is magic. That money will never amount to anything for that person. Just to get that lady. And once they lay with that lady, they have collected the soul. They just carry the soul and go and dump in their as exchange. Then in their mind, they have been promoted in their spirit world. That sister. Or if it's a brother, they collect the soul wasted some died some they can never amount to anything some people if they get married years after both the man the husband of the wife the woman when she later get married both the woman they will try to get to a certain level that they are not progressing that whole investment will crash before their eyes because why they have wasted the glory of that woman people need to understand how spiritual they work Spiritual realm is deep. It's your reward. That's what I tell anybody. Your dream life is your reward. That is where the soul communicates. It's the soul that communicates with God. Your spirit man. 
That is what the enemy is looking for. And it is your soul that is precious to God, not your flesh. Because the word of God said, dust you came, dust you go back. This let me go back to dust. It do go back. But the soul doesn't go back to dust. It goes for judgment. So you need to wake up from your dream. Come out from your deep sleep of ignorant and disoriented oriented lifestyle. That from today, I am awake unto righteousness. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk out about seeking whom he may devour. Awake, oh, not me speaking, oh, is the word of God. Awake. Be vigilant. It's time for you to wake up from your sinful nature. Depart from me. For the devil, your adversary, is going around. It's his business to go around. God permitting. To look for that vulnerable soul for him to devour. So you think, uh, I was born in Texas church, so I cannot. The enemy will poke your eyes silly. If you are not in the palm of Jesus Christ, when they finish with you, some of those cars, you won't like the way you look. When the enemy, the devil, finish with you, which is urgent, you will pray that you will not burn onto this earth. But those who are in the palm of Jesus Christ, God said in the hours of trial, God Almighty said, I will save you, I will separate you from the hours of trial. I will not allow that trial to consume you. Verse 9. Who resist whom resist? Who steadfast? Who resist steadfast in the faith? Knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that they are in the world. That are in the world, sorry. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered. A wife make you perfect, stuff us, strengthen, settle you. Storm is not supposed to consume you. Hear the word of God. Read your Bible. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. After the storm has prevailed around you for a while, little, it's supposed to be for a little while. That is you, I'm giving you a light to come around. It's supposed to now go away because in that process, you have now been stretching. You have been lifted out of that dungeon. You are straight. You are not a roaring lion. You are now a sword in the power of God Almighty. You are not a vessel of honor to the glory of God Almighty. Storm is not supposed to consume you. So I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, it is against the Holy Bible in First Peter chapter five, verse ten, for storm. Trials in your life to continue forever all the days of your life. It is against the Bible. It is against the Bible for trials to consume you. It is against the Bible. Which Bible verse? First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. He said it's not supposed to. It's not the will of God that trials will persist in your life for a lifetime. He said, after a while, you will come out of it. Let me read um NIV. First Peter chapter 5. I'm only going to read verse 10. First Peter chapter 5. I'm reading only verse 10. NIV. Again, I read in Jesus' name. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, I repeat, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast to storm and trials are not supposed to live in your life forever all your lifetime no if it's there it's against the bible you permit it if storm and trials continue in life in your life where life is so dead for so many years, you have been the one to permit it. 
you have not cried unto God in faith enough. Not just pray, you know, before you pray, your life must be pleasing unto God. So the reason why trials continue to manipulate your life is because you permit it. The reason why trials continue to manifest your life in your marriage because you permit it. Trials are not there to consume you. They are there at the end of the day to strengthen you. God will use it to strengthen you. But what do we have in our present day world? Everything that is bad, they dump it on your head. You accept it. Mind you, the word of God said, a man's enemy and members of his household. So it's not outsider. I'm not reading another. I'm telling you about the word of God. So most cases, your trials that you go through are manipulated by so in the inner caucus. The inner caucus, people close to you. Very close to you. Some people is their father. Some people is their mother. Well, but their own grandfather, like your own grandfather did not kill their, your own father. But your father will now have the infantry to want to use you for ritual. Why did their father not use them? Your own grandmother did not use your mother. Why did your mother have the right to use you? Because they would have used them. If that's the trend, they will use them first and leave all the grandchildren. This, they can use them. So who gives them the right to use you? You permit it. Your grandparent did not use them. You now permit your parent to use you. You permit it. Even if they have done something in the past before you know Jesus. Once you know Jesus, you are a new creature. Have it in mind. The soul they dealt with is not the soul that is living. If you are in Christ, old things have passed away, including his own, the thought they dealt with has passed away. Behold, all things become new. You are not living in Christ. The life you live, the life that is not hidden you, in you is Jesus Christ. It's not the life your mother gave birth to. No. When you are born again, notice spiritually, the life that your mother gave birth to has gone. It is the life that Jesus died to give you that is now in you. That is why he said in baptism, you die with Jesus and you resurrect again. When you come out of that water by mercy, you are a total new creature. You are no more indebted to that evil covenant. They use your blood to sign. No! Anytime they invoke your name again, thunder will strike them, including those that give birth to you. If they dare mention your name for that ritual, may thunder strike them dead because their father did not kill them. I'm very violent when it comes to this area. I know why I'm saying so. You need to understand your right. It's because you do not know your right. You are asked on every dumb, dumb thing, every bad thing they point in your life. You just be murmuring, oh, why me? Why, why you what? Why me is you permitted it? Storm, when they come, the disciples went to Jesus. Lord, save us. So also you have the same right. Yes, it's in Hebrews chapter 4. You have the same right. Maybe I should repeat it and read directly from the Bible. Let me read it from the Bible. You will now understand. You have the same right to go to God now. Oh, God Almighty. Why do people like to suffer? That is my question. I'll ask this question. Why do people like to suffer? And the reason is sin. Sin. You don't want to depart from sin. Why? Why people like to suffer for no reason? Jesus paid the utmost price for you. When trials come, yes, trials will come. It's not supposed to manipulate you forever. It's not supposed to manipulate you for a lifetime. It's not supposed to consume you. That is it's all biblical. But you keep quiet. You are convinced. In most cases, you go and pay your pastor. The man is busy sleeping. In fact, he goes to his occultic meeting, you say he's praying for you. Pray to who? Who is he praying to? God Almighty. That said, I am a jealous God. That shall not save another God except me. They go there and call the name of another God. And you go there and you be, you come to their church and you say they are praying for you. Wake up and embrace the word of God, the Bible. This is the life. The pastor is not your life. Brother, is not life. Slavery is not your life. This is the life you have. Live it. Hebrews chapter 4. So when you see bad things happening to you, just accept it. You just accept it. 
So tell you, you have the right to come to God when there is storm. If you are already in the Lord, hear what the word of God says. Seeing then, I'm reading verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing, that is when you're looking, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God. This is who we have. Because you have a high priest who has ascended to heaven. Jesus, the Son of God. The Word of God specified. Jesus, the Son of God. This is who you have if you give your life to God. Let us hold fast our what profession. What do we declare we will do? Follow him. Hold on to that. Verse 15. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. We do not have a high priest, Jesus, who does not feel how we feel. He knows how we feel when we go through pain. Because on this head, he was persecuted. He knows what storm look like. Because he felt the storm. Storm before him. But he submit his life unto death. And took it up again. Resurrect and go, went to ascend to heaven. The word of God said, I read verse 15 again. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with our infirmity. But was in all point tempted like we are. He was tempted yet without sin. So he knows what we are going through. Because of that, the word of God said, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Because you have Jesus who has saved you now from sin by his blood. You can come boldly to God's throne. Let us, verse 8, 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. What did blind Bartimaeus ask for? Mercy. That we may obtain mercy. When mercy located blind Bartimaeus, what happened? He received his sight. The blind man by the wayside received his sight. Mercy located the woman with the issue of blood. Which storm will be for you? Then you think mercy will not look at you. He said, the word of God says, since we have Jesus, who is our own mediator, he has saved you already, if you are in Christ, so not as a murderer, not as a fornicator, not as a liar, not as an adulterer, not as an idolater, not as a liar, not as a froster, not as an arm robber, not as a gangster, not as a liar, not as a, a worldly dresser, but as the one who has repented of sinful nature, I no more want to be a sin. You have said it. He said, Let us now, oh, mercy Lord, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. The time of need is the time of storm, also. You cannot come boldly to God's throne. But when you are coming, are you coming with a clean heart or a, a polluted life? Are you coming to God as a murderer? Without mercy first? Don't cry out to God for mercy and don't go back to those sin. Remember that you repent now. Oh Lord, I will not do it again. Mercy look at you, yes. It's your right. Because grace is available. But in the afternoon, you did it in the morning. By 12 noon, that same time, your time, 12 noon, now, you went back to sin. No, 12 noon, maybe it's too early. In the night of that day, you did your repentance in the morning. Night, you are back to sinful nature. Are you telling me the same mercy will continue to live with you? When the God, what of God said, God forbid that mercy will be like this. The word of God said, our God cannot be mocked. You need to repent from that sin forever not that you repent today you continue sin every day you go for altar call as you are departing from church you and the sister in the lord in the lord in quote because you are not in the lord you and the sister in the lord on your way to your house to do fornication some even married people married woman will call another married man they commit double adultery or you leave on sunday after altar call monday morning you are stealing your company's money or you are committing fraud any form of fraud, both international. Immediately. It's an error. See, I was living in sin when I didn't know no. 
that it was a sin. But when mercy looked at me, I don't go back to those sins. Never. I told Jesus, I, I, I want to I wanna love you forever. I want to live to please you forever. Help me never to go to them. And when I'm praying not to go to them, I am also acting it. I'm fleeing from every appearance of sin and evil. What's look like sin? I want to flee from it. I might not be a perfect man. I'm telling you. One thing you should understand about God. You want to go say, go search in the heart. But he in God Almighty, you know the intent of your heart. So when you say, I repent, there's some action you take. You might look like if God is going to condemn you. If those intents are not for you to continue in sin, God will have mercy on you. Abraham and Sarah, they spoke something that wasn't right to man, but it was not counted against them. But the word of God said, and Abraham obedience was counted a righteousness for him. What about that statement he made to Sarah? See, and you need to understand how God works. You need to come out from your sin and allow him to lead you. He will lead you. He will let you know his path for you. He will reveal it to you. So that that storm that has before your family, your marriage, he will take it out from you. Let me tell you. The reason why whosoever is married that is going to come across this message, I want to appeal to you. Please. If you have time, tomorrow Monday, 6 p.m. New York time, be part of our Corpus Bible study. It's going to be a very, very a unique experience, a life-changing unique experience for you. If you can, you are a married couple, you are a married couple, whether man or woman, whosoever will come across this message. If you are a woman, encourage your husband. If you are a man, encourage your wife. You know, I'll let me some woman encourage your husband man encourage your wife that is what the bible permits I hope people understand me if you're a woman encourage your husband if you're a man encourage your wife be at tomorrow's bible couples bible study on our zoom platform you want to be part of it don't miss it it's going to be a life changing experience you will say glory be to god i was part of that administration that day, tomorrow that's coming tomorrow it's going to be a testimony manifestation encounter. It's going to be Bible study, strict Bible study. You need to come and hear what the word of God said concerning you. So when you are laying blame, oh, your, if you're a woman, say, my, your husband, your husband, oh, you will look inward. You will see where the Bible tells you that. It's right in the Bible. No, it's, a, it's not vague. It's very pronounced and open. You will see it yourself. If you're a man, you're just blaming your wife, your wife. Oh, you know this, because of this situation, your wife, you will hear that you are part of the problem. Do your part first. Continue doing your part. Allow God to change the woman, if that is the position of things. How long? You don't tell God if it's going to be one month, two months, six months, one year, even if it's ten years. Allow God. He knows the reason why he allowed that change to take ten years. You have to wait. Let us meet at the couple's Bible study tomorrow. You don't want anybody to know your name. Like I said yesterday in our Thanksgiving service, I said, if you come to tomorrow's Bible study, we permit tomorrow only. Don't need to put your name. You can Don't put your name. Come and hear what the word of God is saying concerning your marriage. So when storm comes to your marriage, you will know how to handle it. That is why this is just a preamble. Tomorrow is going to be a great testimony for somebody. You need to experience God in your marriage. You need to know how to handle situations biblically when they come up in your marriage. People of God, storm and norm, God does not permit storm to consume you. No. They are there to strengthen you and you will come out of it gloriously. So that the name of God will be glorified. Not for any reason. For the purpose that, not for any reason, sorry. But for the purpose that the name of God Almighty be glorified. And your soul be saved. Because the ultimate purpose of altar of prayer fellowship is for my soul to make heaven the holiest of holy. The soul of my wife, my children, my siblings, you, your family, everybody that is genuinely ready to repent. That is the purpose of altar of prayer fellowship. Other ministry purpose can be for other things. Mm -mm. This ministry is for souls to be saved and make heaven. That is the purpose. 
strictly that purpose. And everything the Bible says we should do to be saved is what we preach here, including praying. You know, somebody once said, Oh, woman, don't woman, don't say this. The Bible expressly says, Woman, teach the women. A woman shall teach the women. Bible instruct a woman shall teach the women. So I give glory to God for my wife, what God is using her for. I pray God Almighty will continue to strengthen her. To use her mightily to win souls for the kingdom of God, including every woman listening. I pray God Almighty will use my wife to minister to you. Not she's also a human being. And if your husband is interested, let him listen. There's no way you I'm not sure you will get to heaven that day a living the holy life. They say, but you heard the word of a woman before you change. A woman said, repent, and you repent, and you get to the heaven. You are living a holy life. They are the gate of heaven. The heaven say, the heaven will judgment will say, no, because you heard the word, repent, through a woman. Now, you are living a holy life. You are disqualified. Did the Bible say that? This is, you see, we need to come out from our sinful nature. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Whatever storm is, you are coming out of it gloriously. Don't forget, tomorrow, Corpus Bible Study. Tomorrow, 6 p.m. New York time, Corpus Bible Study. Don't miss it. If you want to be part of it, please don't forget. Be in a hurry to drop your message on our messenger. Say, please, I need the link for tomorrow's Corpus Bible. Even if you don't want to attend all our other programs, just tomorrow's Corpus Bible Study, I can tell you, you will give glory to God at the end of the day. Because storms that come in your marriage, you must learn how to overcome them. Most of those storms, we are even nurturing them. Do you know that there are some storm that is trials is self-inflicted storm? There are some trials that before us we are the one that inflicted on ourselves. Most trials that you see before a man we inflicted, not all, but most. Let's ask ourselves a question. You're a man married. There, your wife does not allow you to get close to her. That gives you the ticket to go and be doing other things outside. In the course of doing outside, you meet the Jezebel. When she finished dealing with your life, if you live, if your life is still left, you might not be a human being forever. Some live with scars. I don't want to mention a horrible life. But you use your money or your time to go and invest in a woman that's going to destroy you. Or God is about to transform your life. God has been healing you. Okay, you went through a, a, a trying time. God decided to bring you out of your grave and begin to heal you, heal the process. But you just allow one little move of temptation. The, the devil will come and dangle a little carrot in your front that look like the real one. It must always look like the real one. In most cases, it's not the real one. Look in between. You say, okay, no, you can do shortcut in this by the time this your this thing comes, you can just switch. But this one is just for the other side. That is the fake. You have just deprived yourself of the whole blessing that God has practiced for you. The healing has started. You just truncated it. Then you have to start a new process later and be praying for mercy. So some of us we inflict our own trials upon ourselves. But when that storm comes, you need to learn how to come out from it. You need to do what? Learn how to come out from it. Storm wasn't created to consume you. Storm wasn't created to consume you. There are ways in the Bible that if you listen to the word of God, if you allow the word of God to dwell in you, let me just read some Bible verses for us to hear. Hear the prayer that Psalm prayed. In Psalm, David prayed in Psalm chapter 34. In Psalm chapter 34, I'm going to read NIV. I'll be reading quickly. Psalm chapter 34. I'll be reading quickly as we round up. Go to some few Bible verses. Psalm chapter 34, verse 4. The word of God speaking to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalm 34, verse 4. Hear the prayer that Psalm is praying. Psalm chapter 34, verse 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Did you hear David said he kept quiet. No. I sought the Lord. So when storm come, you ought to go to the God Almighty. Just like disciple went to Jesus. You ought to go to God Almighty. The word of God said, I sought the Lord. And he delivered me from my fear. 
One of the things that come with storm is fear. One of the things that come with trials, fear must first come. Ah, this issue of life. How do I come out of this? David said, this is what you should do. He said, I sought the Lord. And he delivered me out of my fear. The word of God also speaking to us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. What do I do? When storm comes, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. What do I do when storm comes? Thank you, Jesus. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. When storm comes, it's time for you to cast your worries onto God. Lord, take over this battle. I have no power of my own. You alone can deliver me from this strike. See, when storm comes to you, you need to understand what the word of God said to you. What is the word of God saying concerning that situation? This is why we are in altar of prayer fellowship studying the word of God. First, you need to sort, seek the face of God. But for you to seek the face of God, you must be in tune with God Almighty. But before we get there, I want you to understand that God already has a promised word for you in that situation. Read Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. God already promised us. In Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, this is the promise of God concerning you, concerning me. When storm come, when storm come, Isaiah chapter 41, I'm going to read NIV again, verse 10. I read in Jesus' name. He says, so do not fear. He's speaking to you and I. Speaking to Brother Lawrence. I'm sure he's speaking to my wife. I'm sure he's going to speak to you. He said, do not fear. Isaiah 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. When storm come, you need to take this message back to God. Lord, this is your word for me. You say I should not be afraid. Father, this is your promise. He said, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. He said, in that storm, I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteous, with my righteous hand. God said, in that storm, I will strengthen you. I will not just strengthen you so that you can come up for it, out of it. I will also lift you up. I will uphold you so that you can come out of that storm. You need to understand the promise of God. Storms are not there to consume you. Trials are not permitted by God to consume you. But they are there so that the name of the Lord be glorified. And God gave us another assurance in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, I'm going to read NLT. What is the word of God telling us when storm comes? 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm reading verse 9. I read in Jesus' name. Permit me to read from verse 8. The word of God said, Paul said, three different times, I beg the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. When you feel that the word has forsaken you, that is when God reveal himself. When the word forsake you, God will show forth. But he will not show forth by you murmuring or quiet. He will not show forth like that. It depends on your level of faith. Just pray one minute, one hour, one day, one week. Why did the word of God say the effectual? Fervent! Effectual! Fervent! Prayer! He could have said one day, do you, don't you understand the word fervent? Continuously. Jesus Christ said, with the God that created the heaven and the earth, not avenge for his own elect who cry unto him day and night. With God Almighty, whom his children cried unto day and night, we need not answer his children. So when storm comes, it's time to get close to God. But not to get close to God for the sake of storm. That's why you must be ready before then. It's time to get close to God, buckle up, make sure you live a holy life, and be prayerful. It's not my word, the word of God said, pray. Pray. He said, all you need to come out of that storm is my grace. God is speaking to you, brother Lawrence. I'm sure he's speaking to you too, that brother, that sister. He said, all you need is my grace. Mind you, the purpose of storm, I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again, is to drag your soul to hell. 
I'm telling you the truth. Don't deceive, you. Don't deceive yourself. It's the plain truth. The word of God said, again, I repeat, in Psalm chapter 125, verse 3, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the righteous. Hence, if he rest, the righteous will put forth their hand into iniquity. You see where it ends up? The purpose to which the rod of the wicked come is to make sure he influence, punish, as in, pressurize the righteous so that they will go back into the world and live a sinful life. It's not my word, the word of God, read your Bible. Psalm chapter 125, verse 3. So therefore, when storm come, you ought to be strong in the Lord. Storm and dear, they must come around. It's not my word. The word of God says, surely they will gather, not my me, the Lord. But whosoever shall gather for, against you, for thy sake, shall fall for thy sake. So they will gather. Storm will come. They will, they will invoke storm. But those storms are not supposed to consume you. Those storms are not supposed to consume you. What is it supposed to do? It's supposed to make you strong. How do you get strong? You develop an unusual faith. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to, I, I was supposed to read, you can read from verse 1 to verse 11, but I'm only going to read verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11. I will read verse 6. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God said to us, I read in Jesus' name. The word of God said, and by faith, even Sarah was past childbearing age, was able to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. When there was no hope of conception, even childbearing age for Sarah, Sarah had faith because he believed the one who had made that promise can do it. So also, when storm come, it's time for you to develop an unusual faith. You have given your life to God. You've been running your race. You believe God. Is the one, Lord, Lord, I know you can't fail me in this time. Though the storm might look as if this storm will not go away, but Lord, I know your word said, though it might tarry, but as you wait, my own promise confirm you will surely come to pass. So you need to understand what God said concerning you. The reason why that storm continue to manipulate you again i want to tell you it's because you're not seeking the word of god, seeking god in the right manner you need to seek god divine intervention using the word of god to seek him storms will come around but do not permit those storms to consume because god did not permit you to consume it he only permitted to strengthen you so that his name be glorified how do you put this thing together jesus was asked why was this man born blind? Born blind, not that he grew up to be a blind man. Born blind, and Jesus Christ said, Because the name of the Lord, we have to be glorifying his life at a later day. Can imagine the punishment the trial the man went through begging? But he grew up born blind because a certain time will come when he grew up as a man, he will receive his sight, and the name of the Lord will be glorified. Who told you that God did not permit that situation so that his name, of, his name will be glorified in your life? Who told you that the name of God will not be glorified? God is always there to glorify his name. He said, in weakness, dear my power manifest greatly. Hebrews chapter 12. It's second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. In your weakness, dear my power manifest mightily. God is speaking to you and I. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. We're rounding up, please. Just bear with us. I want you to take something home here. So that you will not permit storm to just continue manipulating you. It's time for you to say enough is enough. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. Thank you Lord Jesus. Father mighty God we thank you. Daddy we give you all the glory for your message. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 I read in Jesus name. The word of God said you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Did you see what the word of God said here? The word of God said, when storm come, you will have to seek me. And if you have to seek me, for you to find me, you will need to seek me with all your heart. Not that one side sinful, another side holy. Mm -mm. Not ceremonial holiness. Not that you seek me, you'll be murmuring. 
all your heart. Verse 14. I will be found by you, declare the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity, and I'll gather you from all the nations and place where I have banished you, declare the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. If you seek me diligently with all your heart, you will find me and I will deliver you from this storm. See the Lord God Almighty. Read your Bible. Not my word, Jeremiah chapter 29. Read verse 13 to verse 14. The reason why storm continue to persist in your life is because you want, you have not given your life to God. Two, you don't seek him with all your heart. You say, no, I go to my pastor. I didn't mention, did you hear me say, you go to your pastor? This is more superior than your pastor. You see the Bible? The Holy Bible is more superior than your pastor. There is no body on, no human being, no power is more superior than this world. No one. So if you want to see God, seek him by his word. Use his word to cry unto you. Lord, this is what your word says. And you will see God working mightily. It works for me. I'm telling you now. I'm just giving you an insight. It works mightily. And why am I holding on to the word of God? Because I know that this is the only way I can get to heaven, the holiest of holy. So while you are seeking the Lord by the Bible, you are living by him, by the word. You are living what the word of God dictates you should do. That is, you are living by those dictates, not partly. I don't live to please man. I'm telling you the truth. That's why I and my wife don't keep too many friends. But we have friends. We have sisters in the Lord. We have people we pray to. We have sisters even on this platform. A lot of you here, almost everyone. But when it comes to heaven race, it's one on one. I'm sorry to announce it. We are all running our race individually because I'm not ready to go to hell. You might not understand. Yours might just be saved and make heaven. But maybe the reason why God saved me is to make sure, Lawrence, you don't all come to heaven alone. No? You will make sure other people will be saved. So you'll see my own, my own conditions are a little bit higher. You are not just being saved. You are not just walking out to salvation, departing from sin, Lawrence. That's not the only thing you do. You are not only beginning to strive to make heaven alone. You must also be telling the world, repent. Because the word goes, go ye into the world and become disciples. Repent. Because if I don't do it, on that same day of, day of judgment, God will ask me, I saved your life. What did you do with the life I saved you? Yes, yes, you, you are in heaven. You, you got to the throne of heaven. What did you do? So I should be now able to say, Lord, have mercy. I preached my word, though a lot of people did not receive it. But maybe some, maybe some got the word. I spoke your word. And Lord, do not condemn me because I am striving to live a holy life. Yes, you said I live a holy life. But I also make effort. Please help me. That is why I'm more. I'm preaching anytime I'm privileged. This is the only thing that gives me joy. I repeat, preaching the word of God is the only thing that gives me joy. The only thing that makes me anytime I don't preach the word of God, if I'm supposed to, that whole day I'll lose my peace. I'm confessing to you people right now. Anytime I don't tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ, and I've already made that today, I will be doing it. Even if it's late, I have to do it. Why I don't know, it might not be this one's present here, my brothers and sisters. It might be somebody will come across it somewhere and say, I think this message is for me. Let me change. I might never meet that person. We might all live in different parts of the world or our, or our lifetime. But he has got the message. So also there's somebody here who also gonna be God is gonna use one day. Praise the Lord. So I want to appeal to you. Make sure you seek the Lord with all your heart. Make sure you seek the Lord with all your heart. Make sure you seek the Lord with all your heart. And how do you seek the Lord with all your heart? How? How? Let's read a very popular Bible. We have two Bible uh, chapters to look at. Let's look at a very, very popular Bible book chapter. Second Chronicle chapter 7, verse 14. I would love to read a very simple, simpler version. There's no one that's not simple because if the Holy Spirit that will make it known to us. Second Chronicle chapter 7, verse 14. I will take it one thing after the other. I will read it, then I will itemize those things the word of God is saying right here. Second Timothy chapter 7. Second Chronicle chapter 7, verse 14. I read in Jesus' name saying, If my people who are called by my name we humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. 
Then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. You want God to heal your land. That is, he will remove that stone from your life. Hear what the word of God said. Second Chronicle, chapter 7, verse 14. The first thing the word of God said to us here is if we humble ourselves before him. A lot of us, pride has taken over our life. Pride. Pride has destroyed us. But the word of God said, if you must seek me, first, you must humble yourself. Not my word, read your Bible. Second Chronicle. Chapter 7, verse 14. The first one, the word of God said, make sure you humble yourself. Pride must die out of your life. Yes, I have arrived. I have so much. I arrived. I'm a lady. I'm too. I'm yellow. I'm, um, my color is a light color. You know, those people in Africa, we are so crazy about uh, who has light color. So, uh, women, don't deceive yourself. God created everything. Very perfect. I'm saying it cl clearly today. Pride. So I have money. I'm the daughter of social person. Let me tell you. The daughter of social person will not take you to heaven. That title. Don't deceive yourself. People are richer than the one you are referring to. You are a daughter of. They are all in the grave. Long perish. Who had chains of business. Even their business name has even been extinct. In fact, they are not in the system. Their business name have long been wiped out. They are dead. So, and daughter of social. Humble yourself, the word of God said. If you want to seek me. When the storm come, first, humble, humility matters. Two, pray and seek God first. You go to God in prayer. Seek God first and turn away from your wicked ways. Wicked ways, stop committing sin. God cannot inhabit the presence of sin in your life. He cannot accept you with your sin. He need to see the blood of Jesus Christ speaking for you. But as a sinner who did not accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, so that sin will depart from you, blood of Jesus Christ will not be speaking. Jesus Christ said, I did not come from the righteous, I come from the sinners. So you, the sinner, you need to confess your sins to God so that the blood of Jesus Christ can save you. He said, if first you humble yourself, you seek my face, and depart from sin. So as you are about to pray, Make sure you confess your sins to God. Make sure you don't go back to those sins. Not that you confess the sins today to God, not to Brother Lawrence or your pastor or anybody. Confess your sins to God Almighty. Say, God, I will not commit this adultery anymore. God, I will not commit this fornication. God, I will not lie anymore. anymore. God, I will not commit abortion. God, even the man that followed the, that did the thing that encouraged the woman, you both are guilty of that abortion. I will not commit abortion. I will not not commit fraud. I will not steal my company's money. I will not lie. I will not uh, bear false weakness. I will not uh, do evil things. I will not belong to all courts. I will not belong, be a member of marine agent. I will not be a witchcraft. I am renouncing them today. You must then depart from your wicked ways. Then go say, when you do these things, as you are praying, seeking me, you are seeking with your own heart, all your heart. Then I will not hear you from heaven. It is I mean to come. Why in heaven? I will hear your voice. Hear what the word of God said. When you seek him with all your heart, I will not hear your voice and I will heal your land. God has promised to heal our land. Why are we rejecting, rejecting this free gift? Praise the Lord. Finally, finally, follow me to the book of First Kings chapter 18. You need to see a unique thing that took place in the life of the people of God. First Kings chapter 18. Finally, First Kings chapter 18. Thank you, Jesus. I'm reading verse 21. First King chapter 18. First King chapter 18. I want to bless God for your patience. God bless you. First King chapter 18. Verse 21 said, Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two options? Again, I ask. The word of God is asking Brother Lawrence today. He's asking that brother. He's asking that sister that will come across this message. Just like Elijah went before the people and said, How long, you sister, you brother, will you waver between two options? If, God, if the Lord is God, follow him. If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Ba is God, follow Ba. 
if the demons in the land that you live is what you are taking to be God, follow them. Don't be at the middle. Where are you wavering? You are neither here or there. You go here today, you are here tomorrow. The word of God said, woman, don't dress worldly. You change your dressing partly and you still commit sin. The word of God is asking you, why are you waving? That brother, the word of God said, don't do this sin. You said, okay, I'm still committed, I'm committing adultery, but I'm still committing fraud. You know, because I need the money. Did you ask God what you want you to do? And sin will not leave you. Okay, I have stopped uh, smoking, but I still take small alcohol. Did you remember? Or drunkard, their place will be in the lake of fire. Oh, I've tried to be in, in this. I'm helping myself. You can't help yourself with sin. Sinners head up in a hell if they refuse to repent. So the question before us tonight is why do you waver, brothers and sisters, whosoever will hear this message? Why do you waver? If you look at first king chapter 18 verse 21 elijah went to the people why are you waving between two things if you are for god be for god let it be known that you are living a holy life no not known by brother lawrence or emmanuel let it be known by god because the one that sees your secret place or the unknown part of your life let it be known by god that you are with god then if you're not with god then be with Satan. stop deceiving yourself don't say eh, I am changing partly. I can still come in. No, 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 no. Change. If that's why I said a man wants to come to me physically. I said, You Lawrence, you serve God through Jesus. Him, the man talking to me, said he has chosen to serve God through Satan. He says part he has chosen. He's not deceiving himself. If the it, it, church is not even going, he did not even follow me because I was even inviting him to church. He said no. Because why? He knows the part he has chosen. Which part have you chosen? Which part have you chosen? You, that brother or that sister, that will come across this message later. Have you chosen the part of righteousness? Genuine repentance I'm talking about. You can't deceive me. You can't deceive me. Because me, I don't even bother. My own journey is so, it's a journey, it's a tough journey. The word of God said the road is narrow and tough. Hard. So I'm already I'm concentrating on my journey. So if you're doing... Um, rubber stamp or pancake, um, how do I call it? This one, they just uh, do they, they polish things at the front, the inside is dirty, and you are wasting your time. The word of God said, Why do you waver? Not my word. Why do you waver? If you are for God, be for God Almighty. If you are from the bar, the gods of the land, the evil in the land, you be for them. Let, the, let everybody be known that this is who you belong to. Nobody will criticize you because you are already there. In other prayer we don't criticize. We always simply tell you, this part will lead you to hell. So whosoever is wavering, you know you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. All you did it, all you are still living in sin. It's time for you to give your life to God. Like I always say on this platform, you can declare that repentance prayer in the way you want to do it. But make sure you commit your life to God Almighty now. You mustn't say it the way I say it. If you choose to say it after me, just to encourage you, fine. But if you want to say it, your own way, but make sure you commit your life into God and say, unto God, sorry, you commit your life unto God and say, Lord, I will no more go back to this sin. Help me. So in the next one minute, wherever you are, also going to come across this message. You want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. What you simply do, say it in your own way. Speak to God Almighty. Say, God Almighty, have mercy. Say it in your own way. Have mercy upon me. I don't want to commit this sin again. Help me, Lord. Deliver me from this spirit of sinful life. But if you want to say it after me, you can repeat after me. But whichever one that's okay by you, but make sure you make that step today. Tomorrow might be too late. If at this evening might be too late, you never can tell what will take place. So as we begin to say this repentance prayer, say your own part if you want to say it your way. Because God has given us a free way. He said we should come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. So let us go before the throne of grace, you that brother, that sister, and let us confess our sins before God. As we start, let us begin to cry out to God for mercy. You can say it after me. If you want to, say it your own way. To God be the glory. Believe me, it's from the heart. Repentance comes from the heart and you speak at it. The mouth, you declare. So begin to say it yourself. Father Almighty God, I thank you. If you want to follow me. Jesus Christ, I thank you. Almighty God, I give you the glory. 
Today, righteous father, I beg for mercy. Please forgive me my sins, Lord. Righteous father, please wash away my iniquity from me. For I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I have sinned in my words, in my thoughts, in my actions, in what I've done, in what I've failed to do. My creator, please forgive me my sins. Have mercy upon my soul. Today I decree with my mouth. I renounce every evil relationship I have with the powers of darkness. I renounce every relationship I have with the agents of the devil. I, have every, I renounce every evil covenant I have entered into. Almighty God, please save me. Save me from the power of sin, hell and destruction. Today, I confess you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and personal Savior. Come and dwell in me and give me a new life that I may live to please you, Almighty God, all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for having mercy upon me. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we are praying. If you have said that through prayer point, I want to say congratulations. As long as you're not going back to that sinful nature, believe me, mercy will look at you according to the word of the Lord, not according to my word. But what the word of God said to us in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, what God said is faithful and just to forgive us and to wash us of all unrighteousness. It's not my word, the word of God. God knows our heart. And we pray that God Almighty, His word will be made manifest in our life from today in the name of Jesus Christ. But please, please permit us, everyone, to pray with you. My God and my Father, we thank you for these souls that have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and personal Savior. Almighty God, please have mercy upon them. The same grace that locate me, Lord, that, Lord, you saved me from the bondage, bondage of sin, hell and destruction and death father please let your grace also locate these ones do not allow these souls to perish and go to hell save them lord and give them a new life in the name of jesus christ thank you almighty god for saving these souls to you alone righteous father be all the glory in jesus christ mighty name we are praying i want to bless god for everyone who have been part of this program today it's a new dawn for that brother or that sister that child that just gave their life to god congratulations please don't go back to your sinful nature Whatever that needs sinful nature is, please don't go back to it. Pray that God will give you, God Almighty will give you strength to flee from that sin, that hiding habit that you can't tell anybody, that attitude that you feel has been tormenting you. Pray God Almighty will deliver you from it by His mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, I want to encourage you for those who are married, married couples tomorrow Bible study. It's going to be a unique experience. You want to be part of it? Just drop a message. Please be part of it. It's going to be an experience of a lifetime experience that you will live to remember experience we will live to because we're looking at the bible strictly i will be telling ourselves from the bible this is who we are supposed to be so when you are laying blame on anybody in your marriage come there you will see that you might be the part of the problem nobody come there to blame me you will read the bible you will see what the word of god is saying concerning you i pray god almighty will lead you and you will be there tomorrow 6 p.m new york time praise the lord also on wednesday uh bible study on our zoom platform you want to be part of it please just drop a message on our messenger instantly right now on our messenger just click on it and drop a message please i need your zoom link and you will we will send it to you so that you'll be part of that wonderful experience on that bible study on thursday the women are having a wonderful time praying and studying the word of god still on our zoom platform 6 p.m still new york time wednesday bible study 6 p.m new york time thursday bible study for women and praying 6 p.m new york time on friday still on our zoom platform it's a prayer hour prayer hour god almighty leading each and every one of us to come and seek his face he seek me if you seek me diligently with all your heart you will find me we'll be praying every friday 6 p.m new york time praise the lord on on friday on saturday god leading my wife to speak to the women the men are also benefiting for those who want to the word of god say woman teach the women and every man that hear the word of god will be saved so praise the lord i pray god almighty will minister to each and every one of us i am benefiting from that message on saturday 11 a.m or 12 noon saturday god using his daughter my lovely wife to minister to the women i can assure you that is on our facebook this same platform on saturday facebook 
But in the afternoon by 2 p.m., the children are having a wonderful time on Saturday studying the Bible. 2 p.m., but on our Zoom platform. Children, Bible study goes on on Saturday. We're sorry for this last Saturday that didn't take place. And uh, this last Saturday, my wife was very okay. Not she was sick, she, she, I would just thank God. And we know that God is taking charge. She wasn't sick, everything is okay. She just wanted God to lead her. So sorry, we were not there on this Saturday, but coming Saturday, please endeavor to be there with your children, studying the word of God, the Holy Bible. Saturday, 2 p.m. New York time. On Sunday, next Sunday, like day to like today, 12 noon or 1 p.m., a few minutes after one, will be on Facebook, in altar prayer fellowship family worship to study the word of god again like we have today then by 6 p.m we we'll have our prayer meeting but for today today sunday 6 p.m there will not be there will not be prayer meeting for this sunday no prayer meeting for today on our zoom platform for those who are part of altar prayer fellowship there will not be prayer meeting today this sunday till next week sunday praise the lord we pray god almighty is going to lead you and can you protect you? That's what we're saying. On Monday, 6 p.m., be part of that wonderful experience. Let us thank God. Father Almighty God, we thank you for this unique experience. We thank you for what you are doing in the life of each and every one of us. We thank you for this message you have given unto us, Father. Help me to put this word in practice in my life. Help me to have faith in you, Lord. And on dying faith, help me, O oh God, to totally uh, flee from every appearance of evil and strive to live a holy life all the days of my life. But I pray for every soul that have come across this message, that are hearing this word today, and as many that will come across this message, Lord, let this word be meaningful in their life. Let this word have a divine impact in their life to the glory of your name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father Almighty God, I crown to you. That soul that must be saved concerning the, that soul that must be saved, oh Lord, that this message is meant for. Father, please let that message, this message locate that soul and let them be saved to the to the Lord, to the glory of God Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as many that have come across this message that you want to be established in your word, Father, oh Lord, lead them to a Bible-believing church, even in their community, so that Lord they can continue to grow in the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. But Lord, if they cannot find a Bible-believing church in their community, Lord, increase your power, your strength, even their finances, that they will be able to be part of altar of prayer fellowship, Bible study program all through the week. To God alone be all the glory. I want to bless God for everyone that have been part of this program. I pray God Almighty will continue to strengthen you. God bless you. Till we meet on this same platform next week, have a wonderful week ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen.